Welcome to another edition of Our City. A few things going around the city of Elizabeth this week. On Wednesday, May 31st, around 5 o'clock in the evening, I'm going to join the City of Elizabeth's Office on Aging Bureau. It's going to be at an event honoring our heroes. It'll recognize members of the Stephen Sampson Center Adopt a Grandparent Program. Located at 800 Anna Street. For more information, please call 908-820-4044. And on Thursday, June 1st at 9.30 in the morning, I'm going to attend the United Airlines Summer Kickoff Event. It's for the Student Assistance Program. It's going to be held at the Liberty Conference Room in Terminal C, Newark Liberty International Airport. United Airlines has given opportunities to young people from the city of Elizabeth to work there for the summer. And following that event at 11 o'clock in the morning, the grand opening and ribbon cutting of La Tostana, a Cuban restaurant and pizzeria located at 603 Elizabeth Avenue. For more information, please call the chamber at 908-355-7600. That evening, I will attend the Jefferson Park Preschool Art Show located at 485 Madison Avenue. For more information, please call 908-354-2266. And immediately after that event, I'll attend the Elizabeth High School's annual Academic Excellence Award. This year it is located at the Westwood in Garwood at 438 North Avenue. This is where the high school honors the top students who are graduating. And on Friday, June 2nd, the Portuguese community will have the raising of the Portuguese flag and a presentation inside of council chambers. That evening kicks off a weekend of Portugal events. On Saturday, June 3rd, the Peterstown Soccer Cup Tournament at O'Brien Field, located at 641 657 3rd Avenue. And the culmination of the Portuguese weekend will be on Sunday, June 4th, beginning at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The Elizabeth Portugal Day Parade, starting at Union Square in the city of Elizabeth, to a reviewing stand near City Hall on Elizabeth Avenue, and then concluding at the Portuguese Instructive Social Club on Route 1 and 9. It's always a great day to celebrate Portuguese culture as well as days for those of us in the city of Elizabeth to enjoy a great parade. If you need more information concerning these events or any other events, please call our Public Information Office at 908-820-4124. Please stay with us. We're going to talk more about senior safety tips with members of the Jewish Family Services. We have some of the finest teachers in the country. And then they graduate. Kane University. Welcome back to our city, where I'm pleased to be joined by Ms. Kathleen <coughs> McMahon, who is an RN, an MA, and an MED at the Jewish Family Services. Kathleen, what's MED? Masters of Education. That's what I thought it was, but I figured yeah. it out. Yes. I got the MA and the RN stuff. Yes, but, uh, yes. Both of them in nursing from right. Columbia's uh, Teachers College. Okay. Yeah. So tell me about yourself, Kathleen. Uh, I've been nurse maybe 37 years, and before that I was a nurse's aide and candy striper and all those kinds of things. Candy I'd go striper. Oh, way back. Yourself, yeah. Do you know that I worked at the Alexian Brothers I know, when I went where, to school? <laughs> that's where I first saw the, the they actually had, a, well, the Elizabeth General had the school for nursing. Mm -hmm. My is mother is went? a graduate of there. No, Your I went to is. Boston University. Okay. My mother graduated the day before me, but from Trinity, from uh, Elizabeth General. So you and mom went for a nursing degree at the yes. same time. How she cool raised that? five kids and went, but oh. I went right from high school. Oh, that's really that's a nice story. Oh yeah, yeah. yes, and yes. So you went to Boston College or Boston University? Boston University. And you got your nursing degree and then got yeah, ahead. and worked up in Boston at the Beth Israel Hospital up there. Uh, moved to New York and worked at Sloan Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. I was there for more than a decade. Uh, did mostly medical oncology, bone marrow transplant, but the HIV AIDS epidemic was emerging. And I just, it happened to coincide with my moving to New York. So I ended up becoming the AIDS clinical specialist there and writing, publishing a lot, giving a lot of talks uh, and helping birth, if you will, the specialty of HIV AIDS nursing. And so how'd you wind up in New Jersey? 
Oh, well, um, my mother was going to be living alone in Union County, and I felt that I, I just couldn't do that. So I, poof, on a second, I mean, people were shocked, but I just left Manhattan and came back home again. And I've been here for the last 16 or 17 years, working, driving around uh, Elizabeth and Union County, uh, primarily in community health roles, in hospice, home care, now with Jewish Family Services for the last about about seven years. So when did you start with Jewish Family Services? Seven years ago? About. I'd say that I worked part-time seeing older adults. I continue to do that. I make home visits, making sure people can age in place at home well. I particularly like working with poor people or uh, people who are uh, disenfranchised or have, have difficulty. I did work and I enjoyed it for five years out of Trinitas, uh, Jewish Family Services had an arrangement, a partnership through the Grata Fund, um, and I, it was Care Transitions was its name. And I met people in the hospital and then I would make a home visit when they got home and um, help them in that transition of care. A lot of it was about safety net. A lot of it was, do you have a ride to the doctor? Do you have food? in the refrigerator? Do you know what medication you're taking? Did you get your prescriptions filled? A lot of very basic things, but people get so tired being in the hospital, they're out of sorts, they're... And if they're living to learn, they're probably like, why, why bother? Yeah. At some point that... Uh, yeah, that yes. Act of depression could set in, right? Yeah, well, they're they're, living alone you're, they're sleep deprived. They're alone. They're elderly. Their family members have had, taken time off from work. There's enough people that are working two jobs, let's say, and they find it difficult to take time off to help mom. And you know, there's there's uh, things that have to be set up in the house. And are they having a visiting nurse? Do they need a specialist? Is there a follow up procedure? So. It was very varied. I mean, I delivered food to people's houses. I met some people at the neighborhood pizzeria on, on uh, Elizabeth Avenue because they were embarrassed for me to come to their house. And really? I said, oh, I'll, um, it's okay. Uh, you know, I'll meet you right there at the Did pizzeria. Did you have a slice of pizza? <laughs> sure. Oh, good. Okay. Well, that's a good thing. The owners were always so surprised to see a nurse meeting somebody right here at the diner. I mean, it was very, very good experience. So do people, do you think they listen more if they meet you at a pizzeria than they would in your home? Um, it only happened a few times. I met yeah. somebody on a park bench and <laughs> things like that. Other people said, I'll meet you at my daughter's house, but not my house. And sometimes it's just that they were embarrassed. Sometimes they might be something like a hoarder, you know. Uh, sometimes uh, it, the second visit I was in at home. That's fascinating. So, yes. I, actually, I never would have figured that. And I was uh, working in that particular role before the Affordable Care Act was uh, rolled out. So I had people that did not yet have those assurance phones, so you couldn't reach them. So I was throwing pebbles at people's back windows. You sound like you made this decision really young in life. Is this what you wanted to do? Because you know, you're still passionate about it. Oh, I have to say that um, it's for me, it's not just a uh, profession, it's really a vocation. It's, so the yes. Jewish Family Services, uh, how did you wind up there and, and oh. how did you come into this role now? Oh, well, the director of nursing there at the time also uh, worked at Sloan Kettering and we had that immediate connection. It was strong community health uh, focus and um, a variety of, of, of patient types. A small, there might be maybe seven nurses or so that work in a really group practice model. Um, you're out on the open road seeing people. I prefer to see people where they live instead of in a sterile doctor's office or hospital. They're not themselves. You know, I want to see how they are, you know. And that I, tells you something about a person oh, too, right? Yes. Oh, it tells you so, so much, so, so quickly. Then uh, I did, I, I still have a uh, caseload. I was um, brought into a, a new federal grant that they, uh, they have from the um, Jewish Federations of North America for Holocaust survivors. And that happened about a year ago. And it was a big cultural shift to pull me into the Holocaust survivor population. And it was a major uh, emotional and uh, adjustment. Um, going through the stages of moral outrage, almost, a, a, well, not almost, yes, what mankind is capable of. But working with them about their sleep challenges and aging in place and not wanting to be institutionalized. And, uh, but how many people do you see a day? Is that 
Uh, it can vary. It can be anywhere from, I would say it's only, a max is about six a day okay. is what I try. If I give talks, I can see 50 people, right. you know, in just the one talk. Um, this talk in particular that uh, you saw me at was sponsored uh, by Merck and by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey. And I thank you for allowing me to interrupt you that day so I can oh, move on. Oh, no problem. That was problem. very kind of you. You were running out to yeah. my, home, my homestead where yeah, I was born, right. Bayonne, if I yeah, recall. I had to go to a funeral. Yeah. So I, I thank you for letting me. Yeah. So can, can you tell me the grants provided by JFS to enable you to give presentation yes. to students? That's the two that I just grant, mentioned. Please. Merck, uh, the pharmaceutical house, and the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey came through with um, bringing health home, helping people, uh, sending a nurse to give talks at senior centers, WISE, uh, different places like that, uh, where, they co where they congregate to have a seminar on, on topics. And um, interestingly, eye complications of diabetes, uh, going through macular degeneration, glaucoma, um, diabetic retinopathy have been very important to people and they've they've been in rapt attention I'm just so I'm surprised uh, some of them I have to do with the translator and I'm very grateful that we have translation capacity where I work and I bring her with me um, and I did one on falls precautions that you came to and I followed it the very next week at the senior centers in Elizabeth Good. people are very interested in falls I, I remember years ago having a group of my mother's friends in my uh, apartment around the dining room table and said I was going to give a talk about falls because uh, there had been a new paper from the American Society of Geriatrics about falls and recommendations. Well, my mother's friends packed the house because it's very pertinent to them. They have, as my uncle used to say, there's a word for fear of spiders there must be a word for fear of falling, because I have it. And he was 94 when he... We haven't figured that word out, though, have we? Oh, someone please, someone we're at a university. Someone going to have to do that. Somebody at the university looked that up for me. So what relevant resources serve Elizabeth, and, and how does... Uh how does Lifelong is well, the name of the program, it, right? Well, the one program was Lifelong Elizabeth, who put together bringing me to the senior center. And from what I understand, Lifelong Elizabeth is really all about aging in place and bringing the consortium of interested parties in Elizabeth uh, together to how do we help seniors age in place. Um, and that would also be part of your lecture about falling, too, right? Yes, to help them understand. It's, it's pertinent because people, seniors in Elizabeth don't out migrate. They they stay in place. They live here, and how do they adjust their apartment, their home, their sidewalks, their shoes? You know, how do they take stock of their environment about what might get me in trouble? And can you tell me a um, couple of? tips to make your home safer, especially okay. for seniors. I brought a little show and tell, and as you can see. Okay, just show, show it that yeah. way. Yeah. Here's a, if you can, I don't know how visible this, can you, yeah. can they see this all right? I'm, uh, this is a handout that I use. Uh, this is someone's kitchen. People uh, have fallen for crazy reasons, such as getting up on the step ladder to change the ceiling light when they're 88 years old and they're using a cane. And I say, oh, no, please, you need a hand. That's you never going to happen to me because <laughs> yes. I don't go on ladders now. I I'm telling you the mm -hmm. unbelievable stories. But there are also things like, uh, uh, you know, not having long sleeved so that you don't have a fire, you know, happen, uh, making sure there's not clutter on the floor, wet uh, floor. My aunt, Louise, she dropped a glass, and even though she was extremely rigid with rheumatoid arthritis, she had a walker. Out of just habit, she reached down to pick up the glass off the floor and fell. Just and, like that? Yeah, and this is what happens. You know, I was, I took a little, my mother's a nurse, I talked to her yesterday, I, and I was thinking about the falls that my mother had. A lot of them were eyesight related. She has glaucoma, uh, macular degeneration, and if, if people have cataracts, if, if the physician is recommending that they have cataract surgery as a person interested in preventing falls, I really highly recommend it to what go What kind ahead. of reception did you receive from some of the seniors? Oh, well, um, the people who were there yeah. said, 
the place, you had them eating out of the palm of their hand. I said, yes, because it's a big topic. It's a topic that's very interesting to them. And then I have a little bit of the gift of the gab, right? A little bit of enthusiasm. Yeah, I didn't notice. Slightly. And I, I was a, I, I've been a dancer since I was about four years old. So I've been a, I teach dance. I dance at the Jersey Gardens Mall. The uh, Cultural Society right. in New Jersey, uh, Elizabeth, yeah. sponsors something at the mall at Columbus Day. And I have my dance troupe where I come oh, and really? do something about Charleston, the Roaring Twenties, or I, I lead the electric slide. <laughs> so I, have, I don't have a, like, a fear of public speaking. And I think that the audience then can relax and they can interject and throw in questions and... So they're, they're so very responsive. And summing up, what do you think is the best advice from a nurse to give to prevent falls? Well, I would like to tell people that they are their own detective. Uh, they have to look around their own environment. They have to think about when they go to, say, their cousin's or their aunt's place or, you know, what is in their environment? Their their niece has a different handrail, a different stair rail, different back steps. This is something to be prepared for. I think they have to put on their own Sherlock Holmes hat, look at their shoes. Do they need really Velcro or tie-up shoes and not be wearing these flip-flop kind of things? If they have a cane, use it. If you need to paint it red <laughs> to decorate it or give it a name, please do. So it's all about Don't you look your at people environment. People go around with a cane and carry it. Yes, mm. I've seen that, and people leave it home. People. People don't want to wear their glasses, let's say. I'm one of those. Okay. <laughs> Come I'm on. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. 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 I don't like okay. to I have well, to, to read, but I don't like them. Well, I got at glasses like many people do in fourth grade. That's about the... I right. t turn over time, and I, I, I don't know why I was one of those people that just adjusted to them. And, but, but the advice is if you need them, wear them, yeah. right? So I they would say about their environment, that most, uh, many falls are accidents. Right. Most falls are unwitnessed. So you have to be your own detective about what happened because no one else is there to tell you. In order to tell, right. And you have to be your own first aid. Right. Elizabeth, I want to thank you for taking the time Elizabeth, to join us on the show. We're in um, Elizabeth. Yeah, I know. But Kath Kathleen, but you know I want something? to thank you for taking the time to join us on I the show. I have four sisters, so I, and I answer to all female names. Well, then I appreciate that. <laughs> thank you for joining <laughs> thank us. You. Thank you. I hope we can everyone. have you back again. Yes. Please stay with us after these messages. More from Jewish Family Services. We're an American original, dependable, historic, nuanced, with all the comforts of home, even when you're just visiting. So we're celebrating for all that we've left untouched and all that we've changed. A place where the past meets the future. So consider this your invitation. We've been celebrating here in Elizabeth for 350 years, and we're just getting started. Welcome back to our city. For the second half of the show, I'm pleased to be joined by Miss Corey Wu Jung, who has a resident dietitian as well as an MS. And she is our Shaping Elizabeth Nutrition Consultant for our Senior Citizens Healthy Eating Tips. Corey, welcome to the show. Thank you. So Corey, tell me about yourself first. Well, I'm a registered dietitian and I started my career working in a hospital in North Jersey. And I work primarily with um, people with diabetes. And I saw so many complications with diabetes and really prevention is the key. Um, so you don't get all those har horrible complications. So that's really why I love working with Shaping Elizabeth because it's a public health initiative and we, um, our whole idea is prevention. And we want to help people learn how to eat healthfully so they can reduce their risks for certain types of diseases and then they can avoid those hospitalizations. So did you go to school for dietary, I mean like you were undergrad, is that what yes. you were always? Yes. So you wanted to do this? Yes. Oh, okay. I, um, I was a big nerd, and um, <laughs> in, well, I still am, and um, oh. in, in, in high school, I saw an ad from the Ad Council about um, different careers in, um, in the health career. Did you grow I, up here in Union County, by the way? I, I grew up in Passaic County. Oh, Passaic. So, um, but uh, I, I, I came across the field of dietetics, and it was about 
food, which I love to eat, and, and then it was all about helping people. So I went to the University of Delaware for my undergraduate and uh, New York University for my graduate degree. Good. So Shaping Elizabeth. Yes. What's your role with the organization? So I am um, a nutrition consultant there, and I was very um, fortunate to be funded by a Elizabethtown um, Healthy Communities grant. So I go around the city um, doing nutrition workshops and really bringing services to the people. So Shaping Elizabeth, I'm sure I, I know you know, but I, I'll share with your um, your viewers, but Shaping Elizabeth is um, a team of leaders throughout the city. There's over 40 um, organizations that are, that are um, part of Shaping Elizabeth. And our whole goal is to make Elizabeth a healthier place to live. And talk about some of those strategies, Corey, that you're okay, doing that sure, with. Okay, sure, sure. Um, well, we want to bring uh, services to people. And um, our whole goals are to reduce childhood obesity and adult obesity and chronic diseases. So things like um, having people have greater access to healthy foods, having them know what to do with those healthy foods, and um, uh, breaking down any barriers. So a prime example of some of the things we do is the mobile food market in the Bayway area. So we've partnered with the um, Community Food Bank of New Jersey and also the Housing Authority. So we pro provide a mobile market to that area so um, residents could have free fruits and vegetables. And again, it's just not giving out fruits and vegetables. It's multi-layered. We partner with the um, community paramedic um, program through Trinitas. So they're providing services. What I do is um, I provide recipes and show people how to, you know, what they're supposed so, so to do. So you talked about diabetes and recipes and healthy food. So eating a piece of candy is bad. But <laughs> what about fruit? Fruit breaks down into sugar as well. So explain to our viewers how eating fruit is better even though it breaks down into sugar. Sure, sure. Well, fruit has so many, uh, fruits and vegetables have so many great nutrients. It's uh, high in fiber, it has vitamins, minerals, um, they have things called antioxidants and phytochemicals. So all of these things um, help to reduce uh, the risk for things like uh, can certain types of cancers, heart disease, diabetes, obesity. But stay away from that piece of candy. Right, right. Because there there's a, we call that empty calories. Contains lots of calories, but no nutrients. No nutrients. Right. So, if you can make one change, Corey, in to improve your eating habits, what would you recommend and why? I would tell um, people to eat more fruits and vegetables. So, you know, sometimes people say, "Well, what's the recommendation?" Well, yes, there are recommendations, minimum amounts, but to make things. Um, you know, um, more meaningful and doable to someone. I say, however many fruits and vegetables you're eating now, eat one more. So is there like a super vegetable or a super fruit? Is there, <laughs> is there one that's better than others? Well, or, we wish there was this magic bullet. Right. But um, as a dietitian- Don't we as Americans yes, want that? Yes, We're definitely. We're always looking for that one thing. That, <laughs> right, yeah. right. So what's the magic fruit or magic vegetable? But we always say variety. Variety. Oh, and eating okay. um, the rainbow. So you yeah. get many different colors. So um, like red tomatoes, red strawberries, green, uh, spinach, broccoli, uh, purple, uh, uh, would be things like eggplant, blue blueberries. So really getting that variety, that colorful variety. So there's no super vegetable. No, unfortunately no, shucks. not. <laughs> so you recently spoke at two Senior Safety Days sponsored by Lifelong Elizabeth. Yes. And so tell me a little bit about what you spoke about. I spoke about um, the importance of food safety and handling food properly. Um, um, seniors are specifically vulnerable to um, uh, foodborne illnesses because their immune systems um, tend to be lower as you as we age. So it's really important to cook food to the proper temperature, um, uh, avoid cross-contamination, um, raw foods and cooked food should be um, handled separately, the importance of hand washing. So when you're on a grill and you're cooking chicken, raw chicken, and you get that on your hands, you should wash before you grab the hamburger to put on a grill. Definitely, definitely. Explaining. And then also, something, what sometimes people do is, you know, they'll have a plate with the chicken on it, they'll put it on the grill, and then they put the cooked chicken back on the, the dirty plate. You oh, really? I got yelled at the first time I did that at home. <laughs> yes, I've never yes, done that since. Yes. Well, so, that's good. I know. You're a good learner. <laughs> I, yeah, I learned that less than yes. once. So a common food safety mistake that people make in the kitchen what, or somewhere, what? 
Well, do you mind if we do a little um, true and false? Sure. Okay, we'll make it interactive for you and your viewers. Okay. So, true or false, you should always wash raw meat or poultry before cooking. True. Well, is that, that's actually false. That used to be an old thinking, but um, USDA and FDA came out with new rulings. They say, no, never wash um, raw um, meat or poultry because that spray from the water can get all over your, your sink, your counter, and other um, areas of, you, ah, of your kitchen. Okay. And you may not realize it, so you may not. Okay. You can't clean what you don't know is oh, Give me is, another is one. Messy. Okay. <laughs> um, true or false? Do, um, do not rely on sight, smell, or taste to tell whether your food is done. Do not? Yes, do not. Do not. True. True. That is true. Okay. So cook, um, cook food is safe only after it, it um, reaches a safe internal temperature. So the best way to tell if it's at that safe temperature is by using um, we a thermometer. Those. Right. So you need an instant read thermometer. So things like uh, meats like pork, um, uh, beef, lamb, uh, the internal temperature should be minimal, should be uh, 145. For poultry, it should be 165. And if you had ground meat like that hamburger, it should be 160. So another thing that's always confusing to me is the sell-by date compared to the use-by date. Yes. What is that? Okay. So the sell-by date is meant for retailers. So, or the, sometimes it's called the pull date. So um, a supermarket um, can should only sell that food up until that sell-by date because then the quality starts okay. to and recede. And the use-by date? The use-by date really is the ultimate. Um, you should only eat it up to that use-by date um, because of that chance for more um, bacteria to grow, that harmful bacteria to grow. Oh, because bacteria, but it's not, like if milk is two days past the use-by date. No, no, the use-by date, you should toss you should it. You toss it. But the sell-by date, I know, that's why it's confusing. Yeah. So milk is a prime example where it has the sell-by date. And usually it's about seven days after um, the milk has been open after right. that sell-by date. And eggs, after that sell-by date, it could be up to three weeks. Okay. So, it's, yeah, it is confusing. So, if, uh, before we close, tell our residents where they can find out more about Shaping Elizabeth. Sure. Well, Sa Shaping Elizabeth, we have our own uh, Facebook page, Shaping Elizabeth. And then we're also found on twi Twitter, hashtag Shaping Elizabeth. So, okay. to help you remember, I gave you, I, I have a um, cling for you, a oh, Shaping cool. Elizabeth cling. And, and, uh... Is there a website where people can get more food safety tips if they really wanted to? Oh, yes. Um, the USDA's uh, food safety um, site is called Ask Karen, www.askkaren.gov. Why Karen? I guess it's a popular oh. name, and you, it's a person okay. to ask. Sounds, um, you know, approachable. Okay. And then the other thing, there's an app. It's called Is My Food Safe? And that's um, put out, it, it's available on iPhones and Androids. Okay. And it's from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Corey, so I really want to thank you for joining on the show. This is a great education. Oh. We got to do this again and talk more in detail. That sounds like fun. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. I want to thank Ms. Corey Wu Jung for joining us, as well as Ms. Kathleen McMahon on the first part of the show. And I'll see you all next week on another edition of Our City. Creating tomorrow's jobs today. Kane University.